Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about some of the woes that I had with my GPS unit at field day. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we jump into today's video, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. If you saw my field day after action report or you follow along over in the forums, you guys may already know that I ran into some GPS issues on field day. And it was specifically related to, at least I narrowed this much down in the field, if I plugged in an external thumb drive, uh, it's just a data thumb drive, if I plugged that into the Pi, all of a sudden I lost my GPS signal. And I was kind of scratching my head while we were there at field day, but uh, realizing fairly quickly that it was the thumb drive that was presenting the problems, I didn't particularly need that for field day. It's just uh, basically a drive that I back up data to. I just unplugged it, rebooted, and carried on with field day. But once I came back, I wanted to kind of get to the bottom of that and figure out exactly what was going on. Now, I posted over in the forums, and I had uh, quite a few responses. Several people uh, seemed to think that it was a power-related issue uh, to where maybe the, uh, the Raspberry Pi was experiencing an under-voltage condition because of the uh, addition of the uh, USB load that was being presented by the thumb drive. And I kind of played with that. Uh, I used D-Message to kind of monitor that when I was plugging things up to the Pi, and I never did see an undervoltage condition. So I eliminated that pretty quickly. Now, one of the next things I thought, the little micro USB drive uh, that I use, or the USB adapter that I use, is all aluminum. So could that maybe be acting like an antenna and uh, jamming, for lack of better word, the GPS signal? Uh, I didn't know. So I pulled out that uh, all aluminum uh, USB adapter and I plugged in one uh, that was more or less just plastic. And I had the same issue. So now I'm really scratching my head. That's not the case. Uh, so I ended up and pulled that one out and tried yet another uh, uh, micro SD card reader. This time, I didn't even put the micro SD card in. I just plugged that reader up straight to the Raspberry Pi. Again, I lost a signal. But let's go ahead and jump over to the Raspberry Pi and let me show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are on the Raspberry Pi, and I've got two different windows pulled up here. I've got the terminal window that I've just run a dmessage command, uh, and I put uh, hyphen capital T so that I get the timestamps on it. And then over here beside it, I'm running XGPS. And you can see, let's see, two, three, four, five, it looks like six satellites have a lock at the current moment. And I may not be 100% accurate on this, uh, but I think what's going on, if they're solid red, it's got a good lock. If it's a hollow red or a, a, an empty red circle there, it's got a partial lock. And then once it goes gray, it has uh, no lock at all on that particular satellite. Now I also see them popping up yellow from time to time. Honestly, I'm not certain what that is, and if, if somebody else knows a bit more about this and what the color representation means, leave it down in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm at least on the right track here anyway. So, what you're looking at is uh, I've got the Raspberry Pi running and just the GPS unit plugged in. I have one USB 3.0 slot still available. And that's the slot that we're going to start using uh, to, to do a little bit of this testing with and kind of show you guys uh, what I have found going on. Now, there was a gentleman in the comments section over on the forum that also posted some uh, additional information on this. And I'm kind of scared to try to pronounce his name 
but his call sign is LZ1DAF. And he talked about uh, USB 3.0 uses uh, spread spectrum, and in essence, it's jamming the GPS signal. So, and that's pretty much right on par with what I found. I didn't realize USB 3.0 used spread spectrum uh, to increase the speed of the card, uh, but it definitely looks like it's presenting a problem. So, let's go ahead and let's plug in the first little USB uh, micro SD card adapter. This one is by Rocket Tech. And uh, like I said, this is one that I thought was presenting the problem because it was all aluminum. But let's plug just this one in and let's watch what happens here. Okay, so I just plugged the card up and you can see I've already lost several of the satellites. These three here kind of look like they're trying to uh, hang in there. Uh, but if you notice down here on the bottom, under the status, I'm seeing no fix. So this was uh, what I was seeing on field day and was really scratching my head uh, trying to get it figured out. Now it will kind of come and go a bit, but uh, it seems to be gone more than it seems to stay locked. But let's go ahead and take that one out and we'll try uh, another type of USB uh, card reader. Okay, so at this point, I do have that first one pulled out, and you will see that it's starting to get a lock on uh, several satellites again. So it looks like uh, three or four of those right now with number five and number six kind of coming and going. But uh, if I leave it in this state, I've been playing with this quite a bit today, you uh, will see that it will continue to stay locked uh, when you don't have that USB 3 or anything plugged into the USB 3.0 port. Okay, so let's go ahead and again, I'm going to plug in another uh, card reader. This one is actually a SD card reader, but it is USB 3. Okay, and now that that one is plugged in, uh, you once again can see that I am completely losing uh, the GPS uh, signal. And this one actually appears to be a bit worse than the first one. So this is definitely uh, the problem. It's some sort of RFI. Uh, maybe it's that spread spectrum that uh, USB 3 utilizes, uh, or maybe it's something else related uh, to the Raspberry Pi. And it could be that the GPS is, uh, you know, because it's a lower end GPS, maybe it doesn't have as much uh, RFI rejection built into it. You know, it's kind of hard to say because I haven't experimented with other types of GPS. Now, currently, the GPS is plugged straight into the Raspberry Pi, but on field day, I was using a one-foot extension cable, and I was still experiencing the problem. And guys, we'll go ahead and run another D message uh, right here, and you'll see that uh, we've seen some of the uh, USB devices plugged in and uh, unplugged, but you're not seeing any low voltage warnings. So I'm fairly convinced this is not a voltage issue, but it's some sort of RFI problem with the USB 3.0 ports that's just wiping out our GPS. So I went ahead and removed the um, USB 3 adapter, plugged my card into a USB 2 adapter, and you can see that I'm having zero issues out of my GPS. So uh, this is a bit frustrating, uh, not being able to use the 3.0 on, um, on the Pi. Uh, I would like to have that faster uh, speed. Uh, also, uh, if you are going to run off of a USB device to boot your Raspberry Pi, this could be another potential problem that you're going to run into. Uh, maybe we can swap and use a different GPS and have better results. I don't know. I might look at that uh, somewhere in the future. But right now, I just wanted to show you guys what the issue was and what you might, uh, you know, what you might see if you try to use the USB 3 ports uh, with a USB 3 device concerning the GPS. You may have the exact same problems that I've had. All right, guys, we will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.